notes to myself about making ADC interrupts on STM32 microcontrollers. And I'm going to go through the three basic steps once you've got the code template in place. Step number one is to start the ADC conversion with the HAL ADC start IT command. Uh, that will eventually lead to a callback occurring once the conversion is complete uh, and you have to implement that in your code yourself at which point you can grab the result with the HAL ADC get value and after that if you want to then you can start another interrupt. So let's see how to do that in practice. The code is written in STM32 cube IDE. I'm not going to go through how that's used and installed and so on. Then we're going to create um, a new STM32 project and it can be done either from here or from the file menu. Now at this point you've got the options of sifting through the various devices that they offer or indeed the various de dev kit boards that they offer. In my case I'm using a Nucleo board and it's a Nucleo 32 so I can filter by that one and then try and find the relevant one which is a 303k8 so I'll select that here and then click next. Then it's asking for a project name, give it a name and finish up. It's asking now if we want to set the peripherals to, the, to their default mode. This means that the IDE knows about the construction of this particular dev board and what the peripherals are doing by default. So we'll say yes. And that sets up things like uh, the UART and so on. Once that's finished, it will put you into the configurator, uh, which is associated with a file called IOC. And in here, you can select the various different pins and what you want them to do. And you can see that uh, there are some pins that have already been configured, and those are the ones that this configurator knows uh, are already in use on the Nucleo32 board. Now, for my project, I happen to want to PA7 to be an analog input. So I'll click on that pin. And then you can see the various different things that it can be. And at the top of the list uh, is ADC2 in 4. So that means that it's connected to ADC2 internally. Uh, and indeed, it's on the in, in 4 multiplex. So let's click that. OK, that's great. Now, if we go to the analog tab here, we can have a look at the details of ADC2. There it is. And that brings up some options here. If you remember, it was in 4 that we're talking about, which is only a single in ended option. So let's click that, and yet more options appear down here. And in the general parameter settings tab, there are things like the clock source, the resolution, whether you want single shot or repetitive measurements to be made. I'm going to leave that in single shot mode, which is just called uh, continuous conversion disabled. But what we will do is go into the interrupts tab and say, yes, please, we want some interrupts. Now, at this point, you may have noticed that there's a little red X in the clock configuration tab. And that's because having done this, the clock is no longer valid. Uh, and in this tab, it can solve your issues whilst trying to maintain the, uh, the, the clock rate that you've asked for. So let's just click yes. And there we are. All the problems have been solved. Now at this point we can save the file and it will automatically generate uh, the associated code if you've told it to. Uh, when you first installed the IDE it will keep on asking you do you want to generate the code and eventually you're probably just going to say look yes that's my default option. So let's save the code and it will then generate the main file and all the other files that we care about. And straight out the gate it will now compile. It won't be doing any ADC conversions or anything at this stage because we haven't instructed it to but we've got a template here that will allow us to, to start to code. Now, just a quick reminder, uh, in code generated by these configurators, it's not just this one, it's most of them, I think, there are areas in which you can put your code and it won't be overwritten or deleted if you go back into the configurator and regenerate the code. They're always delimited by a begin and by an end. Now, as it happens, I do want to do some includes, so let's do that. They'll come in handy a bit later on. There's also an area for private variables. And I'm going to say that we want a buffer for the UART for actually squirting the results out to over serial. And we want a uint32 type for the ADC result. And we'll have something like 
a char for ADC valid, which is just going to be a flag that I use for my own purposes. Okay. Now, at this point, we have the variables that we need. We can now go into main, and all in here, all of the timers and the GPOs and the UARTs and indeed the ADC are now configured. Um, and so the next thing that we want to do is to actually start our very first ADC conversion that can then be used in the in the while one loop, in the forever loop. So let's say HAL ADC start, hit control space to get the options and we want the one with IT which stands for interrupts. And the parameter we give it is the handle to uh, our ADC that we set up uh, and that came from the IOC file from the configurator. So this statement will kick off the very first conversion, um, but at some point we need then to be able to handle that result. And what will happen is uh, there's a, a default handler that's called so that the code will always compile, but it doesn't do anything. So we need to write our own version and we're going to do that in this zone here. It needs to have this name. Now, the first thing you need to do is check that it is indeed the ADC in question. You may have many set up, so it's important to make sure that you're working on the relevant one and you're not doing something that's associated with a different ADC converter. Now, we know that at this point the conversion is complete, uh, and so what we want to do is to, to assign the value, my apologies, to a result, and that's done with HAL ADC get value. Again, you pass it the a pointer to the handle of that particular ADC. And what we're going to also do is indicate to ourselves that it's valid. Now, this means that in the while loop, all we need to do is to monitor that flag that we're setting, and when the conversion is complete. Uh, then we can go on to act on the result that we know by then will be valid. So here is our while loop, and here's the begin and end statements that will allow us to, to insert code. So we can say if ADC valid is true, then do something. Now what is it we want to do? Well, we can create some kind of statement. That will do that. I'm going to cast it to an int just because it will complain if I don't. And we'll send that out the UART. Okay. And in fact, just to stop at any compiler warnings, we'll cast this to an int 8 pointer. Okay. So those two statements will put something on the serial port to report the result. Now let's invalidate the result. And kick off the next statement. There she blows. And we'll put a delay in just to sort of show how these things go. Okay, let's see if that compiles. It does, no errors, no warnings, fantastic. Furthermore, let's run it. The first time you launch run, you get this window. Once you've agreed to the settings, you don't get it again. Okay, that's complete. So the next step is to see if it's actually working. Let's bring up a terminal. I'm in Linux, so the terminal name looks a bit funny, but uh, you can use Putty or any of those things uh, if you happen to be on Windows to, to bring something up. The 38400 is the default UART board rate on a Nucleo F303K8. And there it is. You can see that the results are coming in. It's behaving exactly as we expected. So there it is. There's a summary of the results and proof that it works. Lovely. Thank you so much. Goodbye.